Hello everyone. Once again, this is Dare to Speak. I wanted to talk about something that that's deeply moving and that's very important to me. And hopefully a lot of you out there would share the same empathy as I do. But before I get into that story, <clears throat> I just want to say something briefly about this, about this um, Kung Fu master who was known for um, a technique called Iron Palm. And for those of you who know martial arts, um, especially Chinese martial arts, knows what the um, what the Iron Palm is uh how and the damage that iron palm can actually do when when slapped on top of a on a person's body and stuff like that So with that being said, I just wanted to um, talk about this briefly, about this man, um, I can't even pronounce his name, is G-U-R-U -U and then Zhang, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, you can't see it because it's not, but um, it was in 1931 and he was a very known, well-known martial artist, and he was an expert in iron body as well, or iron vest, or what we could, you would want to call it, or another or tech, or a technique called armor of the golden bell, in which you could render yourself impervious to pain and damage by internal air, internal power or, or chi. You withstand, you know, punishment and stuff like that, and, and also. He was an expert in Iron Palm. And one of these days I'll tell you the, the full story of this because it's very interesting. Well, he actually killed a horse. And the legend has it that he was, um, he, he got himself involved in a competition in which uh, a lot of martial artists were um, volunteered for to see if they could withstand the kick of this horse from, from Siberia. And a lot of them ended up um, getting seriously hurt and they, they embarrassed themselves and a lot of people were laughing at them. And a lot of the foreigners there were like pretty much laughing and saying, you know, and, and there were shouts of sick man of Asia, you know, to make, to add insult to injury. So this guy, he actually, um, took part in it he got hit twice he got he um he got you know wobbled back a little bit but he didn't fall down and he didn't get hurt because of his iron body or, or armor of the golden bell whatever that kind of thing so after being kicked twice he managed to move closer and closer to the horse and then he just slapped the horse right in the middle of his back and the, the horse just collapsed and even though there was no broken bones, well, except for the part that, that he broke the, the horse's back, you know, he, he just broke his spine. When they did the autopsy, and by the way, everybody shut up too. No, nobody was talking shit after that. When they, um, it says here when, in the autopsy um, report states that the horse's skin was not broken or damaged. 
but the internal organs were a mess. The muscles were badly bruised, vessels, uh, blood vessels were burst, and the vertebrae was filled with uh, ruptured vessels and stuff like that. The portion of the organ line uh, lying uh, directly beneath the slapped hand has been ruptured. The horse had died from massive internal bleeding and ruptured organs. And that's iron palm for you and that's, it's no joke. Not too many people can do it, but it's scary as, as hell. They make, they make them very, um, it's very devastating. Well, okay, now, going to this, the main part of this video, there was another um, Kung Fu master, but I don't remember his name. And even if I did find out, I won't be able to pronounce it. Uh, but I read about him in a magazine. And um, this was a long, long time ago. But what I really liked about this about this Kung Fu master was the fact that he did not take part in violence through most of his life. Even though he was capable of fighting, especially in a life threatening situation, he was actually dangerous. He was very he was very dangerous. But he was more like um, like Mr. Miyagi kind of thing, but but, uh, but I guess a little bit better. He was a straight up pacifist. And there was, um, I don't remember if it was the late 1800s or early 1900s. I don't, I don't quite remember. I don't, I don't remember, but I read about him in a magazine a long time ago. There was this, uh, guy that was, um, very angry and bitter. And um, there was this girl that he liked, and she didn't like him. She um, had a crush on this kung fu master and on this on this man. Um, and even though this girl was about. 21 or 22 and th this Kung Fu master was about 40. She had a big massive crush on him and, and the guy that, that liked her was in his um early to mid 20s. He found out that you know that she was flirting with him and then he got so fucking angry that he confronted the, the Kung Fu master and he actually uh, started talking shit and he started to, um, he challenged them to a fight. Um, now, this Kung Fu master, he was, he was into Zen Buddhism. He was heavy into Zen Buddhism. And he liked, he liked, uh, Bodhidharma's, um, Bodhidharma's, um, kind of a philosophy of, of this angry man who was, um, angry and bitter and insulted him and saying all a bunch of stuff like that but and but he managed to keep his cool and and he managed to uh make the guy feel better now most guys especially nowadays when especially if they're being an asshole and and also when it comes to that that whole you know i don't know if it's primal or whatever or, or i don't know if i want to go there but that whole um you know, machismo, kind of, you know, macho bullshit. He's like saying, you know, hey, don't talk shit to me. Well, I'll, I'll kick your ass. And then he'll end up kicking his ass for, for talking shit. And then to add insult to injury, he'll have sex with a girl that he, that he likes just to torture him some more. Most guys would do that. Especially if the... If the guy who got his ass kicked was like uh, like like an outcast or a loser or something like that, and that's the main reason why she doesn't like him. But in this example, he didn't do that. What he basically did was he talked to him very calmly, and the girl was just like 
looking at him, shaking her head, saying, you know, you're acting like an idiot, you're acting stupid. And then he was like yelling at her saying, I'm a good guy. What's what's wrong with you? You treat me like you, you treat me like I'm like I'm, I'm a fucking loser. You know, something like that. He was saying, I, I don't forgot. I forgot the exact words. And then the more she started to dislike him. Now, this um, this Kung Fu master who was into Zen Buddhism pretty much like talked to him calmly and he was being insulted. And he even went as far as the guy, the angry man actually, actually went as far as to slap him across the face and push him. And despite all the the massive venomous insults and the attack that he gave him and then he swung at him the Kung Fu master just dodged moved out of the way and when he grabbed him he didn't grab him to fight him he grabbed him to, to embrace him and say I don't want to fight you I could tell that you're angry. I could tell that that you were bullied when, as you were growing as you were growing up. Um, something like um, these were these were not the exact words, but he was like he was trying to say you were treated like crap all your life. That's why you're angry, and girls never liked you, and that's why you're angry. Like he was able to read him. He read him so fucking well. He read him, he read this guy so fucking well. And then the more he started to read him very well, the more of the negative energy of anger started, started to uh, deteriorate layer by layer or something like that, you know, or whatever. It started to diminish. It diminished greatly. Like he understood him. So he actually um, gave him an embrace and he says, I don't want to fight you. I know I, I could tell you're in pain. Now, if he, if he thought he was a punk, he would have like laid him out or, or did something like that. But he didn't look and he actually, he knew what, what this guy was, uh, he was um, saying, doing all those things and saying all those things out of hurt. And... This is a very touching story because not many guys would do this. Not many tough guys would do this. This is so extremely rare. I wish I could find that magazine that I found. It wasn't, it wasn't one of those inside Kung Fu magazines that I, that I used to read. Um, or uh, I don't know what was a magazine. One of those martial arts magazines. And then he managed to calm him down and talk to him right in front of the girl. And the, and then when she was hearing all this, she started to feel sorry for him. Especially when he turned, when the Kung Fu master turned to her and said, and said don't, don't hate this man. He is, he is a good man. He just has a lot of pain. Please understand, the worst thing you can do is to treat him poorly. The worst thing you can do is not like this guy. And think of him as, you know, like a loser or something like that. But just the way he, the way he explained it to her and the way he um, calmed the guy down. And he was talking to him for a long time. And the guy started sobbing a little bit. And he says, go home. I consider you my friend. Don't worry about it. Don't feel bad. Just go home. And as he went home, the young lady followed him 
and this beautiful girl that he that he loved that he was crazy about or whatever they end up they ended up going together and they ended up getting married can you believe that they ended up getting married they ended up falling in love and getting married Do you realize how cool that would be if that happened more often? Do any of you realize how fucking cool that would be? How many... Who really does that normally? How, how, norm, how often do you hear something like that? That, they usually, that usually doesn't happen. They just, they just end up being like, okay, motherfucker, you talking shit to me? I'll whip your ass. And then to add insult to injury, he'll go date the girl and probably end up, you know, just doing her. You know, like I said before, just to cause more torture and more, more pain. Or well, he says, well, he was asking for it. He, he was, he was talking shit to me just because he didn't bother to understand the guy as to, as to why he was angry to begin with. And, I don't know if it's mostly because of this Kung Fu Master's um, character or the philosophy of Zen Buddhism. I don't really know. Or maybe it's the combination of both, the way you, or his, that, that kind of thing. So, um, I guess he, uh, something I remember him, some, uh, that he remembers seeing people being bullied as he was growing up. So I guess you could kind of understand that. But uh, whatever the case may be, he actually took the time to understand him, to have empathy and, and to know this guy's pain. And to basically say, to basically say, I don't want to fight you. And then the outcome that the nice, the, the nice angry guy who was just full of pain ended up getting the girl. And even, even though the girl had a big crush on, on, on the Kung Fu Master guy, but, and then flirting with him. And then I guess he made her feel guilty or bad. I don't know how, I don't know, call it what you will. I don't know what, I don't know what to call it really. I just don't know this guy's name though. What do what do, what do all of you think about that? Because to me, it's like the most deeply moving story that I have ever heard. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, you know what to do. And this is Dare to Speak. And to all of you. Take care.